Disliked acts while fasting. Some things are disliked when one is fasting. One of these is being excessive when rinsing the mouth and sniffing water through the nose during ablution. This is due to the fear of allowing water to slip into one's throat. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, and overdraw water, that is, during sniffing in of water in ablution, except when you are fasting. Similarly, anything that invokes a person's sexual urge is disliked if he fears the possibility of ejaculation, unless he is sure of his ability to control his urge. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, reported. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to hug and kiss his wives while he was fasting. Furthermore, he had the greatest control over his desires, meaning as compared to you. This is why hugging is disliked for a youth, but not for an old man. On the authority of Abu Hurairah, who said, a man asked the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, whether one who was fasting could embrace, meaning his wife, and he gave him permission. But he forbade the same for another man who asked him on another occasion. Then it became clear that the one he permitted was an old man, and the one he disapproved of was a youth. One of the important points which the scholars stated is that workers in bakeries or very tedious and demanding jobs are not exempted from fasting. This is because fasting is mandatory upon them, just like it is for others. Deliberately eating or drinking during the day in Ramadan invalidates one's fast. This is because of Allah's saying, And eat and drink until the white thread or light of dawn appears to you distinct from the black, that is, the darkness of night. Then complete the fast till the nightfall. Fasting is invalidated by anything which reaches the throat through the mouth or nose, denoting anything which has the meaning of food and drink, for example, giving nutrients through an intravenous injection. However, if the injection is a curative one, such as penicillin injection, it does not invalidate one's fast. The same is the case for anything which enters the throat through the mouth, like an endoscope or inhalers for asthmatics, etc. And similarly, the use of eyeliner, eye and ear drops, or their variants, do not invalidate one's fast. This is because there is no evidence that establishes that fasting is invalidated by any of these. Moreover, eyes are not a usual path for food and drinks. But, it is important to be careful with nose drops due to the restrictions by the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him concerning excess when the one who fasts sniffs in water that is during ablution as the nose is a clear path to the stomach. If he who is fasting takes or consumes a non-edible item or harmful things such as cigarettes, his fasting is invalidated. This is because it is consumed through the usual path of food, the mouth and also because it is a variant of eating and drinking. Fasting is not invalidated by things which cannot be prevented. These include the smoke or dust on the road. And food leftovers which are attached to the teeth. Sexual intercourse is the second act that invalidates one's fast. This is because Allah the Exalted says, It is permissible for you to go into ar-rafath, meaning having sexual intercourse with your wives in the night of fasting. Rafath means sexual intercourse. So anyone who had intercourse while he was fasting would have then invalidated his fast, and he is thus required to pay back the day, meaning in which his fasting was invalidated. In addition, he must expiate by setting a slave free. On his inability to do that, he is required to fast two consecutive months, and if he is not able to do that, he is required to feed sixty needy people instead. It is also mandatory on the woman to pay expiation accordingly if she lures her husband or she responds willingly to his urge. However, if she was forced, her fast becomes invalidated. But she will only have to pay back that day in which her fasting was invalidated without any expiation. It is permissible for the sick to break their fast in Ramadan 
if the sickness would become worse if the sick person were to fast. Allah Almighty says, But if any of you is ill or on a journey, the same number of days should be made up from other days. If the sickness breaks his fast, but the sickness is a form that recovery from it is expected, then it is mandatory on him to pay back the missed days when he recovers. Allah Almighty says, But if any of you is ill or on a journey, the same number of days should be made up after recovery from other days. If the sickness is however a form of such that recovery is not expected, for instance, a terminal disease or an old man or woman that is permanently incapable of fasting, then such will feed a poor for every day missed with half a sa' of rice or any other common food in the community. It is permissible for a traveller in the month of Ramadan to break his fast and it is compulsory on him to pay back the missed days. Allah Almighty says, But if any of you is ill or on a journey, the same number of days should be made up from other days. This is due to the hadith reported by Anas ibn Malik who said, We used to travel, that is during fasting, with the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him. And those of us who fasted neither abused nor looked down upon those who broke their fast, nor did those who broke their fast look down upon those who fasted. The same distance that permits al-qasr, that is the reduction of number of prostrations in the prayer, or salah, also permits the breaking of fast, provided it is known as traveling according to the customs of the people and it is a permissible form of traveling. If, however, it is a form of sinful traveling or a traveling done in order to be free from fasting, then it will be prohibited for him to break his fast. What is left to mention is that breaking the fast is better for a traveler than fasting if the journey is difficult or he would be harmed if he fasted while traveling. This is because the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in one of his journeys saw a man whose fasting had become burdensome upon him, that is, he had been severely weakened due to the severe heat, and as such people had gathered around him. Thereupon the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Fasting while on a journey is not part of righteousness. Similarly, a pregnant or breastfeeding woman who fears there would be a burden on herself if she fasted may break her fast and she must pay back just like the sick. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah Almighty has relieved the traveller of fasting and some parts of salah, meaning the daily prayers, and he has relieved the pregnant and the breastfeeding female of fasting. However, if she fears the burden on only her child or fetus, then she must pay the missed fast back and feed one poor person for every missed day. This is due to the saying of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him. As for the pregnant and breastfeeding female, if they fear the burden of fasting on their children, then they must pay the missed fast back and feed the poor for every missed day. But a female who menstruates or has postnatal bleeding is obligated to break her fast as it is prohibited for her to fast. If however she does fast, it will not be valid and she will still have to pay back the equivalent fast for the period she missed. As has been narrated from Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. When she was asked why a menstruating female pays back the missed fast but not the missed prayer, she said, that, that is, postnatal and menstrual bleeding, used to befall us, and we were ordered to pay back missed fasts, but not missed salah or prayer.